Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. As you can see, I have a special guest. Hi! Brielle came to Florida to visit me and we've had such fun. We've done so many things together already. And yes. we're gonna film a little girl chat, which is something I haven't done on my channel for a hot minute, but you're so special. So I'm like, I have to have a girl chat with ah, Brielle. An so, honor, an honor. Uh, if you don't know, I have a little girl chat series that has been a little dormant, but like I wanna bring it up here and there whenever I feel like it, if the topic is right. So I also have a forum where you can like suggest topics if you want me to talk about something. So I have a topic request that someone sent in actually a while ago, but I think it would be really nice to talk about it now because it's Brielle's here and we can have her input on the topic. So the Yay. first one is about finding hobbies and like, do you have any tips or suggestions with finding hobbies? So we are both big fans of hobbies. I feel like we talk about hobbies all the freaking time. Oh, I forgot to even mention, she has her own YouTube channel. Oh, of yes. Of course. So, <laughs> but I'll put the links in the description, but go ahead. Thank you, thank Sorry you. So finding hobbies, this is something we talk about a lot. Mm -hmm. And I think both of us have reconnected with our younger selves. Yeah, that's recently. like a, the biggest thing I feel like. Mm -hmm. like. And we've really talked about how like, if you're looking for a hobby, the answer might be in what you used to love mm -hmm. doing. Like I've recently rediscovered writing, which I loved in middle school and high school. Or it might be a combination of things you used to love like maybe you used to love telling stories and making little skits and now you like making short films like yeah. it might be like an evolution thing mm -hmm. what are your thoughts yeah i agree 100 because i feel like the question when it said like finding hobbies i'm like i don't feel like you need to like look very far just yeah. look at your past what is something that you like to do in the past and just try it again and see if it's something you want to do like you're giving those examples and we talked about this on a walk because we went on a walk together <laughs> and like brainstormed some of the things and like if you like to play with play-doh as a kid maybe pottery will be more your style if you mm -hmm. like to do art just do the same thing honestly i don't feel like there's really any like kids hobbies that like is exclusive for kids like adults also need hobbies and they should be doing them but like yeah. we start focusing on our careers and like other things that grind the hustle so then we just stop finding joy in the hobbies and like trying to like take some time alone not being productive just having fun amina and i talk a lot about how like so many people who we see who are unhappy would be so much happier with the hobby oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like for sure. It really can give you so much like purpose and fulfillment. I feel mm -hmm. like it's interesting to me when people ask for advice in finding hobbies because I feel like it's not often, at least for me, it hasn't been something that I actively question or ask myself. Mm -hmm. Like I don't often think, okay, I want a new hobby. What should I do? Yeah. To me, a lot of it feels intuitive and it's like about following your curiosity, right? Mm -hmm. So like if something looks of interest, exploring it and just like continuing that exploration until you land on the one thing that is the best fit for you. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, I feel like a lot of times you know what's pulling you. Like, you just have to learn to listen to that. It's like the, you don't find your hobby, maybe a hobby finds you. Hobby finds you, mm -hmm. exactly. Maybe people who ask, like, any advice for finding hobbies, it's not like, try a hundred things and see what sticks, really. I feel right. like you know what you like. Yeah. Like, I, I don't feel like it's that hard. I agree. I'll take, like, <laughs> I take I doesn't seem that difficult. Maybe we make it more difficult than it needs to be. I don't feel like I make it that difficult because I'm just like, I know what I like. Mm -hmm. And like, you're gonna find something new. Like, I feel like maybe we're thinking too hard yeah. about it. I don't know. Also, I feel like if you see what you like or see what you admire about other people, like say you really love following other artists on social media, yeah. but you're not creating art yourself. There's probably a reason why you're liking following those mm -hmm. people. Like I've had to take hints sometimes from my subscription feed and be like, wait a second, why am I watching all these vlogs of this person? from doing this yeah, thing you, maybe i want to do it yeah, too and also that just brought up uh, like a point that i really want to make is that you don't have to be good at them oh like, no you don't have to be like amazing at it you don't have to try to monetize it you don't have to like be good at a hobby to for it to be your hobby exactly. just if you're happy doing it then it's a hobby no like, i agree so maybe i don't know maybe that's like mindset people think you have to be really good at it you have to be proud to show you don't have to show it at all like mm -hmm. just do what you want to do i have a feeling the person asking this question it might not be so much that they don't know what their hobbies would be but that they're struggling to prioritize it or pursue it okay so what are your tips for that then oh okay i mean i think a part of it is what you were saying in terms of releasing the idea of having to be good like embracing the beginner's mindset is huge to get yourself over the hump of actually starting something and then i would say make it as simple as you can like if you're trying to like get into art maybe you don't need to go buy a hundred dollars worth of art equipment maybe yeah. you just start sketching for a few minutes yeah you know like make it its simplest form and 
that if you're liking it, you'll get, get momentum yeah. with it. Yeah, I agree. Don't have any expectations and just like enjoy yourself and see what sticks with something that makes you happy or not. And maybe in terms of prioritizing, it's kind of hard because you can't tell somebody to prioritize something if they don't want to prioritize it. Yeah. So if it's not something that you genuinely already want to do, it's kind of hard to be like, oh, prioritize it. And I do believe like there probably is a like little bit of forcing sometimes when you're like, oh, I really have other things to do, but this is good for me. Yeah. Because it's really good for your mental health to just like take time for yourself and do something that makes you happy and it's not for anything other than making you happy. Like, isn't that wild how, yeah. like, we don't really, as an adult, do that anymore. Yeah. Especially, like, older adults than us. Oh, It's like, absolutely. oh, doing something just for fun? Crazy concept. Right, right. It's really not, like... And then they're all depressed. <laughs> yep. See. <laughs> Like, that's how I feel about that. No, but. that's true. And I feel like I even have to sometimes tell myself that it's okay to take time for mm -hmm. things like reading yeah. and stuff because I struggle sometimes with the productivity guilt. But I will also say, like, I think the lines between hobbies, passions, like, hustles, they can be kind of blurred because oh, I would yeah, still absolutely. consider things like YouTube and writing hobbies, even though I am also trying to monetize them. Yeah. So... I would say, like, if maybe your hobby is going to be starting a Etsy shop, that's okay, too. Like, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be purely for the fun of it. Yeah. You can also, like, if, if that sounds appealing to you, make it more businessy. It's mm -hmm. just finding, like, where in that range is yeah. most fulfilling for And you. it can be a slippery slope, too, because if it becomes your job, then it's, like... Then you need more new hobbies. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I want everyone to have jobs that they genuinely enjoy and that makes them happy and all that stuff. But then, at the same time, if we monetize everything, and you talked about this before, yeah. then it's, like where when do you have time for yourself and i think that's the point of hobbies is just making time for yourself that's a really good point so. yeah true i think it's important to have at least one or two hobbies that you do just for fun just for the sake of it mm -hmm. so then they also asked you know finding your true passion which i feel like is a loaded like question yeah well something we talked about is the fact that we feel like there's a progression like sometimes a hobby can become a passion absolutely as you get more invested into it mm -hmm. what are your true passions what are passions in your life okay and maybe how you got there i would say that that I consider writing YouTube and photography to all be passions of mine. I feel like I can tell that it's a passion and not just a hobby because I itch for it. Ooh, I like yes. that. Like, when I am away from it for too long, I get that little feeling of, like, wait, I yeah. miss that. I really mm -hmm. miss doing that. Mm -hmm. So that, to me, differentiates it. And to me, a passion is something that you don't really have to force yourself to do. Okay, yeah. You're kind of naturally motivated. You want to get back to it. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that way? I agree. So in terms of my passions, I feel like, again, also probably YouTube, mm -hmm. language learning is something that, yeah, I feel like I, I'm really itchy with that. <laughs> When it, comes, when it comes to language learning, I get I am really itchy. And I guess maybe again, because we were talking about the progression, I don't know some hobbies if it's a passion for sure. Because I do love writing and I think that's really fun. But right now I'm not itchy. You know what I mean? It's like And it doesn't have to be consistent either, maybe like passions. That's a really you know, good point. Like you're passionate about this right now. That's a but so very good point. I like what you talked about the itching part because I don't know how else to really describe it besides yeah. like you just really want to do it. You don't really have to force yourself to do mm -hmm. it. And like that's not even to say that there are sometimes because people have circumstances in life and sometimes you can't always do what you want to do. You have to prioritize other things. But for the most part, if you have all the time in the world, what would you be doing? Yeah. That's probably the two. Like That's a good point. Yeah. yeah. I totally agree with what you said about how you can have different eras and like phases with different passions because there was like so many years where I wasn't writing and I didn't feel like yeah. I was missing anything mm -hmm. because my passion was elsewhere like yeah. I feel like my passion moves to different things at different times mm -hmm. or even like right now I'm not really like doing anything with photography but I know like yeah. one day that might come back up it can up. be dormant it can be dormant yeah. it can be sleeping mm -hmm. but it'll wake up <laughs> it'll wake and back it, up maybe if it's a real passion it will yeah I think so, so it will always come back and again with the hobbies and the childhood thing like even though you used to do it a lot as a kid your enjoyment it's still there even though you haven't unlocked it yet again or it's been sleeping for a bit right when you do it again it will spark stuff just the other day when we were painting yeah. i felt so happy yeah i haven't painted like that in a minute yeah and i was like well this is really like exciting for me i used to do it all the time but then i took a little break and maybe you don't have to do it a certain amount of time where there's not like a value or like a measurement to be mm. like oh if you do it this amount of times then that makes it a passion i you agree know what I mean? it's so, not black and white like mm -hmm. that i agree the way that i kind of am looking at it is I feel like passion is something that we all always have yeah. and you're just kind of seeing it come out through different activities yeah, yeah. whether 
it's you know uh, super visible or not you always have passion mm -hmm. it's just what is it coming out through in this time yeah and also circling back probably to hobbies and passions because there's so much overlap I think you mentioned this too like with what do you like to watch and stuff mm -hmm. like you don't have to look far like you said exactly so I feel like the answers are always like right there I agree the like, answers are always there it's obvious but like just kind of like trying to find it and to be like where do i look exactly it's yeah. there i feel like we all kind of know the answer i totally agree and it's so funny because it's one of those things that they always say like in hindsight you can put the pieces together but sometimes in the moment you can't yeah like there might be a moment where you find that passion or hobby and you're like duh like i should have known yeah. and all the clues were right there yeah. that i would love this thing yeah but sometimes you have to get to that point and then in retrospect you'll put it together like yeah. even with writing like i said i was away from it for so many years mm -hmm. but writing and making videos about writing combines so many interests I've had over the years it just like makes sense like yeah, yeah. I'm like how did I not think of this earlier mm -hmm. but sometimes you just need to trust the timing of that too in the yeah. sense that like you'll discover things when you're meant to if you're following what's interesting you and like paying attention to the intuition part of it mm -hmm. you'll discover what yeah. you need to and again with it will find you uh -huh, like exactly. you can't force it you can't force and, like, it you can try so many different hobbies and like I feel like I know like there's some hobbies and activities that I just know I would not enjoy it. just based on how I know myself and things that I've enjoyed in the past it's a tricky balance because I agree don't force it but I also am not encouraging like don't even try because but some of like, things you know for sure right, right, right like you will not catch me like doing a marathon but, yeah. but, but, I, get your but I meant don't even try as in like it doesn't mean that you should just be like well it'll come to me I'm yeah, just yeah. gonna like lay back and not actually yeah. pursue anything like I don't think if I hadn't tried all the other pursuits I've tried over the years I don't think I would have found my way to writing mm -hmm. so sometimes you do need to like take pieces from different things that you do and different yeah. experiences mm -hmm. and that will lead you in the right direction but you have to at least be open-minded to discovering yeah, yeah. it i agree you know 100 percent okay <laughs> so the next and the last thing that they talked about is about true purpose in life which i think is very interesting just because we were talking about the progression maybe if you find some hobbies it will lead maybe to passions and then maybe your purpose in life <laughs> but like yeah. we said we were talking like in our walk i don't think we believe that there's one purpose that's gonna last a lifetime that you need no. to do like you can have a purpose for a certain amount of time it's completed on to the next yes but what are your thoughts i totally agree i think you can have many purposes throughout your life for mm -hmm. sure and even more than one purpose at the same time like i wouldn't say mm -hmm. that i have one specific purpose at this yeah. time but that doesn't mean that i feel unfulfilled i'm just yeah, yeah. getting meaning from a lot of areas mm -hmm. in my life and i would also say it's kind of risky to put all of your sense of purpose into one thing because if that thing doesn't work out or something happens that's too much pressure you need to have diversified fulfillment you mm -hmm. know so i would caution against putting too much weight on yeah. having one purpose but that being said in terms of like finding purpose i guess my advice would be that to me purpose is about finding how you want to feel in your life and then trying to optimize your life for that feeling mm -hmm. so if you get purpose from meaningful relationships you want to feel really connected and like in touch with the people you love okay how can i optimize that how yeah. can i make sure i'm spending more time with them mm -hmm. or maybe you get purpose from feeling creative and like you have something to say okay how can i do more of my creative hobbies yeah. or make that into a career mm -hmm. like find what feelings make you feel the most like i don't know fulfilled to me feels like very like warm and just like shining yeah it's hard to explain like yeah. when you know that you're doing something that's like oh this is hitting all the so spots. fulfilling yeah. yes it like lights you up mm -hmm. is kind of how it feels yeah. so find whatever feelings light you up and then try to design your life to make sure you're getting more of that Ooh. yeah <laughs> like that and also just to add i feel like having one purpose in life is a man-made concept i don't feel like we were made for one thing and that like you need to find this thing it seems like you're always going to be trying to find that one thing and it's yeah. like there could be many things and then also i feel like with this question i don't know what this person was intending for the answer but a lot of times people when they talk about their purpose in life they think it's career only like mm -hmm. it's gotta be career based yes and i and we're talking about this oh bro we talked too much <laughs> literally we're like we've talked about all of we this we talked so many times bro like this is day three guys we've been spending <laughs> so much time together so we talked about like literally everything but I feel like people focus way too much on careers and like what you do in life. That's the main question people ask you when you first meet. And we don't even know probably 100% what each other do for work. Like we have a general idea, but like- We, we don't talk about it like No, ever. that's like the least interesting thing about yeah. both of us. Yeah. So I think 
hopefully the person who's asking and if this is something that you're trying to seek that don't only try to focus on career because you can have a purpose that has nothing to do with how much money you make or what you're doing for work and totally. I think it's just the way we value work too much and I mean we live in a capitalistic yeah, capital society. society so yeah <laughs> so it's not that much of a surprise but if anything I would try to advise to like look away from career first if mm-hmm. anything because I don't think that is where you're gonna find the answers like it could be your career it would be nice if like I'm very passionate about my career and it's something that brings me joy and everyone wants to do something they love but like your career right now is not your dream job right and you feel that fulfillment when you write and right. when you do things you can have that fulfilling thing and it not be funding your life yeah so. exactly yeah. I agree I heard this analogy the other day that was like a girl is standing by an apple tree and when she's trying to pick which apple to choose she can't decide and all the apples fall off so she gets no apples basically it means if you wait forever trying to decide what the right thing is your one purpose in life Mm -hmm. you might miss out on a ton of opportunities because you're too busy fixating on what's the one right path yeah you know and i think this about a lot of different aspects of your life whether it's a relationship or where you're gonna live if you're too worried about picking the one perfect thing you're missing out on the fact that there could be lots of different opportunities that could make you happy you know maybe you could be happy living in florida or california or you know what i mean like there's not just one reality that's going to fulfill you and so that's why i don't believe in the one true purpose i'm like i could probably be happy pursuing this or pursuing this or soulmates like i don't believe in soulmates. like there's so many billions of people in the world you can be happy with a lot of people i agree so that's why i I totally agree but also i like what you said because it also shows that like if you choose something it doesn't mean you're stuck with it you're not married to the idea there's not like okay this is the time to choose and you have to stick with it and there's no going back which is also brings me to like maybe another conversation but college and how you're meant to choose what you want to do for the rest of your life at 18 Mm -hmm. and how that can be so stressful for people they end up changing their major so much they end up wasting their money which i feel like maybe is what they do purposefully so they can make more money but (laughs) it's like you what like come on when you're 18 years old you have to like choose what you want to do for the rest of your life and you've only been on this earth for 18 years and you're going to be at that job longer than you've been alive yeah like that's why yeah, that is wild. That's wild. Who came up with this? I know, I know. So yeah, I don't I don't want people to feel like there's a sense of permanence in whatever they decide to choose no. and what they want to do. Even just the way the phrase like purpose in life sounds too it sounds much. It's a yes, little much. Like, I agree. What do you just like to do? Yeah. What do you feel like would bring you the most fulfillment in your life? And then go out and do that thing. But like I totally agree. I feel like we like stress ourselves out. Like even the wording can like be just stressful and it's not that no i agree and especially now because it's like like you said we have all this pressure on ourselves to pick one thing and stick with it like maybe that's how things worked in our parents generation or our grandparents generation Mm -hmm. but now people switch careers all the time they move around people are not like settling down and staying in the same job for 50 years anymore Mm -hmm. that used to be a thing but thankfully now it's not (laughs) so you can always pivot you can always find a a new passion like it's never too late to be like screw all this i want to like go paint in antarctica like yeah it's never too late interesting in antarctica <laughs> <laughs> i was like i need to spice it up painting's kind of basic let me go with antarctica yeah, yeah I can do that. <laughs> mm-hmm. but yeah i mean it's never too late to to pursue something new and yeah. let that free you to make a choice and know that it doesn't need to be permanent period <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I, was I, was thinking. I think the biggest overarching thing for me is don't overthink it lean yeah. into your intuition and what you've always been pulled towards mm-hmm. and give yourself permission to pursue those things mm-hmm. because you're probably holding yourself back like you're probably second guessing yourself you're questioning what you think you want to do if something's interesting just pursue it and you can always pivot later yeah is, is this our closing statement i think this is our okay. closing <laughs> statement <laughs> I feel like my closing statement would be not to look too far about hobbies, passions, and all that stuff. Look to your childhood. I feel like all the answers lie in your childhood when you didn't care about anything but what made you happy. That's a great point that I feel like we didn't quite say. I mean, it's kind of obvious, but I feel like the reason why your childhood is such a good time to look at is because you had no ulterior motives. Mm -hmm. You didn't know yet that you were supposed to be making money. You weren't trying to impress anybody. Yeah. Like, it's a pure form of what you like. Yeah, I know. So that's that's even why the answers what, are there. I know. Even just what you look like. My happiest moments, I feel like, or purest moments of, like, just joy were when I was younger. I didn't care what I looked like. I didn't care about my goals. No. Nope. Like, nothing <laughs> mattered. 
water. Like, I would be in the playground getting sweaty dirt under my fingernails. Yeah. You know, You're it's just, just playing. It's just a great time. Yeah. And so I feel like if you can just look and think about what you did when you were younger then that would like honestly hold all the answers i feel like because you're not that different let's be real i don't feel like we're that different in like no what brings us joy mm -hmm. maybe in your thoughts and beliefs but definitely like what brings you joy it probably doesn't change that much and if you think about it too things that you hate like the foods that you hate you probably hated from the beginning when true you were <laughs> so like our taste doesn't probably change, change all that, that much. much yeah going off of that i feel like if you find things that feel like play and make you forget like time and space it's and the flow you forget to eat like oh go to the bathroom <laughs> you forget to go to the bathroom yeah. that's how you know you're in that zone because mm -hmm. it's like oh wait for a second i forgot about all the adult responsibilities yeah. and i was just playing again mm -hmm. and i feel like that's how you know you found like a passion yeah 100 any other closing thoughts no i think that's okay, it okay i think this was really fun honestly this was so fun uh i hope this was interesting for you all and gave you some clarity if you have any questions about finding hobbies passions life purpose and all that but don't think too hard honestly it's not that serious <laughs> nothing is permanent so we can always try new things and explore other things and all that if you have your own questions that you would like to have in a future girl chat i have my form in the description you can request any video topics and maybe in the future you'll be here for another one that'll be really fun i hope so, so. thank you to amina for having me on her channel Dude, this was so much fun this was literally like us all week i know talking about topic so Bam. be sure to watch Brielle's just two channels she has a writing channel so if you're interested in writing and books and all of that then go ahead and check out Brielle writes and then she also has her I don't even know if I call it your main channel personal but yeah your personal other channel where she does like resets productivity like personal development type things so it's Brielle Juliet they're in the description thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next time bye, bye. <laughs>